I've finally solved the electrical problem on this SL55 AMG whereby the battery was running down if you left the car parked up for four or five days. When we first got the car, the battery would consume a battery would run down in just a day or two. And we tracked that down to a faulty tracker unit which we took out. What I didn't realize was there was actually more than one problem. And the reason I didn't realize it was that the clamp meter that I was using was just not good enough quality to detect the milliamp draw that we were dealing with. So the first part of this video is all about different types of clamp meter you can get. And the problems with trying to use a cheap and cheerful Chinese unit to detect a milliamp draw. And then about halfway through the video, I'll show you how we eventually found what the problem was in less than two minutes using a thermal imaging heat camera. So here we've got a range of different clamp meters ranging from below 50 pounds all the way up to several hundred pounds. And the purpose of this video is to illustrate what kind of clamp meter you need to diagnose electrical faults on your car to try and help you avoid making some of the mistakes I made and incurring some of the costs I did. The first mistake I made when I bought a clamp meter was not realizing the difference between AC and DC clamp meters. This one said it was AC and DC, and I assumed that um, related both to the voltage and to the current, but in actual fact, if this only does AC current, there's a wavy line there along the A that needs a straight line underneath it for DC current. So this clamp meter here is useless for doing automotive diagnosis. Having seen the error of our ways, we then went out and bought a slightly more expensive clamp this is by Hold Peak. Now this has some excellent features and some drawbacks. One of the excellent features of this particular clamp meter is you can download an app onto your smartphone and basically get a digital reading on your phone when you're not right next to the meter. The reason that that's so good in the context of a Mercedes where the battery is in the boot is you can clamp this around the negative terminal or the positive terminal on the battery in the boot, close the boot, let the car go to sleep and then look on your phone and you'll still have a digital readout of what current is being drawn when everything is supposedly shut down and all the lights are off. And that is an excellent feature of this particular unit. However, the drawback of this unit, and indeed any other unit like this that I've looked at, is that it only goes down to 200 amps. And on these cheap and cheerful units, i.e. between 50 and 100 pounds, they will only read up to 100 milliamps. So they'll read in 100 milliamp steps, i.e. 0.1 on this meter is 100 milliamps, 0.2 is 200 milliamps. So if you're trying to do anything more accurately like trying to find milliamp drawers the sort of thing that could be draining your battery to be perfectly honest this is okay but it's not ideal the best feature of this is the bluetooth connectivity this clamp meter here is by fluke they're very well known precision instrument company and many electricians and people working in electrical engineering will be well familiar with this branch well, with this brand sorry and have used them before now it's often said that you get what you pay for and that is certainly the case when it comes to buying a clamp meter this clamp meter by fluke here the fluke 325 costs just under 200 pounds delivered to our front door next day delivery and our experience of this unit has been excellent First of all, it feels quality to hold, really nice in the hand. It's got a much smaller diameter here, but most importantly for our purposes, the amp setting here drops down to 40 amps with a two decimal place resolution. So that means when this unit reads 0.01, that is 10 milliamps, 0.02, 20 milliamps. So this unit here can read in 10 milliamp steps, whereas this unit here, can only read in 100 milliamp steps, and in my experience, is not actually that accurate either. So for most people, this is the unit that you're gonna need to accurately diagnose battery drains in your car. It's also worth mentioning that this Fluke clamp meter here does a whole host of other things other than just read um, current. You can also use it to read voltage, temperature, diodes, resistance, etc. So it does come with all the wheat leads and a really good instruction manual. And one thing you'll find when you buy these cheaper Chinese um, clamp meters, they also come with an instruction manual, but it is not very comprehensive. And if you need any kind of support, you will struggle to get it. Whereas these guys here, I have to say, have been excellent in answering my technical questions and telling me exactly what I need for this job. Now, if you find yourself trying to track down 
battery leaks in the milliamps as opposed to in the amps, then Fluke do this excellent meter here, the Fluke 771, that is a milliamp clamp meter, and this will read currents from 0 to 100 milliamps. You'll notice the clamp is much smaller and will be able to just read milliamps in wires maximum diameter of that hole there. Now what we've got here is a simulation of your Mercedes. So we've got the car battery here, we've got a random motor, an interior light, a servo motor, an electromagnet that you might have in a relay or something like that. And my question to you is, which one of those modules or units draws the most current? And we're going to find out using this Fluke 771 micro, sorry, milliamp clamp meter. We're going to start off zeroing this meter here. And then we're going to carefully clamp it around a terminal of the battery, make sure it's free moving and not clamped on the wire. And you can see that's got a 30 milliamp draw with none of these modules on. The 30 milliamp draw is basically from these LEDs and that's simulating your car alarm, your key fob. That's the kind of current draw you'd expect to get in a, an SL with nothing on. Now let's see what happens when we start turning these modules on. We're going to start off with the motor. You see that that um, current draw is up to 94, 95 milliamps, still below 100 milliamps, okay? Similarly, we're going to see what happens when we put the servo on. Now, the servos tend to just have a boost of um, current when you activate them, and there you can see it has a boot as the servo, servo moves, and then it drops back down again. So that is not drawing any more than about 20, 30 milliamps. That there is drawing about 60 to 70 milliamps. Now have a look and see what happens when we actually turn on a light. Because before I did this, I assumed that a motor would draw a lot more current than a light. But have a look at this. OK, that is going off the scale very, very quickly. I'm dimming that light down, but if I just put any kind of power through that at all, it goes way beyond the limits of this meter. And the reason is that is important is because a tiny little light like that can have a significant draw on your battery, easily over 100 milliamps. And similarly, when I power up this electromagnet, you can see that that draw is going from 32 milliamps to off the scale. So these modules with um, electromagnets inside them also have a large current draw just as to these lid and interior lamps. So a great feature about this particular clamp meter is you can clamp it around the negative terminal of the battery and then you can close the boot, turn the car off, and lock the car sitting there at 0.4 which is 400 milliamps 0 0.3 300 milliamps now the problem with this clamp meter is is that's the best resolution you're going to get really you want another digit there to show you whether that's 490 milliamps or 430 you, you just won't know on this clamp meter but in terms of pulling fuses and seeing which fuse actually gets rid of the draw this would work if you happen to have a parasitic draw that was fused. So you can see that on this car here, with nothing connected, the car asleep, there's a draw of somewhere between three and 400 milliamps. Now, if you walked away for three days, that would easily be enough to run your battery down. That should be something like 0 0.03 to 0 0.06, i.e. 30 milliamps to 60 milliamps. So. We've got a parasitic draw somewhere. What we're gonna to do to verify exactly what the parasitic draw is, we're gonna connect our fluke clamp meter up in the back of the car, set up a camera tripod with a, and run a camera with a light on from the camera to actually read a more accurate reading. So we've just set up another smartphone, just filming that fluke clamp meter there. You can see that's on 3.32 amps because we've got light on the boot module open and various modules on on the car. We're going to close this now and then we are, the car will lock itself and we will come back in a second, wait for the car to shut down and see 
what that camera has actually recorded on the fluke meter. As we close the boot lid, you first of all see that current jump up, and then as we lock the car, you see it jump up again, just about there. And then if we leave the car for several minutes, you'll see the current slowly dropping. It's at 2.6 amps at the moment. And after a minute or so, you'll see that drop down to one amp and below. And then if you left the car for long enough, that would drop down to about 0.2, which is about 200 milliamps. Now, 200 milliamps, if you think that other hold peak meter was reading three to 400 milliamps, so once again, the difference between an expensive meter, apart from it has a much better resolution, is also the accuracy. This fluke meter is giving you a much, much more accurate reading than the hold peak meter. A another point worth mentioning is if you are trying to track parasitic draw by undoing the negative terminal of the battery, and holding a voltmeter between the two terminals, as soon as you undo the negative terminal of the battery, you'll obviously lose any memory functions, but your voltmeter will have a fuse in it. We've got a 10 amp voltmeter, and you'll notice at the beginning of this little short clip that there's much more than 10 amps going through the meter when you close the boot and when you lock the car, and we managed to blow up our voltmeter whilst doing that, so it's worth bearing in mind. You can see now the um, current has dropped to 200 milliamps, and once again, if you walked away for a few days and left it like that, the consumer electrics battery would run flat. Now this SL55 has three fuse boxes, two in the front, one here, one on the other side, one fuse box behind the seat here, and there's another couple of cutoff fuses in the boot. Now, we have pulled every single one of these fuses to try and find where our battery drawer is, and it didn't help us at all. There is another method, rather than pulling the fuses, you can set your voltmeter to micro, sorry, millivolts, and just put it across the top of the fuse. There's two little, um, each fuse, one of these little fuses has little metal bits at the top. You can measure the microvolts. It should be zero, but if you find any microvolts across the fuse, you can then print a chart off the internet and that will tell you what amp amperage is going through that fuse. And some people swear by that method and say that that method is absolutely brilliant. But there are several drawbacks. Um, not least, you obviously can't test relays, you can't test bigger fuses. And also, you can't test for intermittent faults either. For example, if you had a faulty rear windscreen wiper motor that was stuck and kicking in every now and again, you might not get a constant parasitic draw on your battery, and then you would put your voltmeter across here, it would read zero, and you'd move on to the next, and you would miss it. And also, which is um, pertinent to our particular problem, it doesn't tell you the, the total current draw. When you use a clamp meter, we had a combined parasitic draw coming from our tracker unit and also from that glove box light. This method here will not accurately tell you the, um, the sum of all the draws. And the other thing to bear in mind is, if you look over the other side of the car here, when you have fuse boxes right next to a battery like this, um, you can get misleading results from that method, not least because you're near a battery, but also on fuses over 25 amp, i.e. 40 amp fuses, the, that method is not particularly accurate either. So definitely worth a go, but it certainly didn't help us in this particular case. There are certain types of parasitic drain or battery drain faults that you are not going to be able to pick up with the standard methods of removing, removing fuses, etc. And that is where one of these comes in handy. And this is a thermal imaging camera. Now these tend to be pretty expensive. This is a, my father-in-law's who is a design engineer. And this one here is about 1700 pounds worth, but it will allow us to do something that we can't otherwise do which is figure out which part of this car is warmer than it should be. Now this car's been sitting overnight, hasn't been on, so there's basically nothing in the car should be warm, but we know that something is draining the battery, but we just don't know what it is. So I'm gonna go around the car 
until we find a heat source. There's nothing showing up in the fuse boxes under the bonnet. There's nothing showing up in the rear fuse box. So I'm gonna go inside the car now. I've got the keys on me, so it should open. And we're gonna start scanning the inside of this car for heat sources. If you point this all the way at the dash here, you don't see anything until you get to here. Now, can you see that bright orange light there? When we shine it on the silver here, now the silver's reflective and therefore it's reflecting back the infrared, but as you move over here, there's no reason why there should be any heat source Let's in there. Let's open this up and have a look. You can see that that light is on and obviously that is what is causing that heat spot on the lamp. Now if I put my iPhone inside the glove box and close the glove box, you can see that that light is staying on even when the glove box is closed. Now here you can see using this super accurate milliamp meter that that light there is actually drawing more than 100 milliamps. This meter here only goes up to 100 milliamps. Having removed the light bulb, this is the fluke clamp meter in the boot of the car, just on a camera stand filming with everything switched off. That battery with a 55 milliamp draw should last, that consumer battery should last something like two to three weeks. I'm gonna leave this video here and just finish up with where we got our fluke meter from um, and the other hold peak meter, etc. We've tracked the parasitic draw down to a faulty glove box light switch. Both the light itself has got a crack in it, which is contributing to the problem, but the catch itself is suspect. So I'm gonna dedicate a whole video on how to fix that problem for good and also how to replace that glove box light because it's not nearly as simple as you might think. You actually have to take out various panels, at least we did. So I'll do that in a separate video. We got that hold peak Bluetooth clamp meter from eBay, cost just, just under 38 pounds delivered. You can use that for diagnosing uh, car faults, but it's not ideal and not particularly accurate. Our Fluke 325 clamp meter from these guys here, CEF, they delivered it the next day, it cost us 144 pounds plus fats. £173.94 total. Now that's obviously significantly more than your cheap and cheerful Chinese clamp meter, but there are very good reasons for that. This is made in America. I think it's got a lifetime warranty. I may be wrong about that, but I think that's the case. And it's completely different when it comes to quality and accuracy. My own view is I spent quite a long time trying to track down that um, electrical fault using cheap and cheerful equipment. And if you're gonna do a job like that, it's probably worth getting the right equipment to start off with. It might cost you a little bit more, but that'll probably last you a lifetime and it'll do the job. I'm not for one second suggesting you rush out and buy a fluke milliamp process meter. This would be for people dealing in sort of circuit boards and stuff like that. But just to let you know, these babies are not cheap. Over 600 pounds for that unit. We used a FLIR or FLIR i7 camera. Um, I'm not suggesting you rush out and buy one because even second hand on eBay, you can see that these things are still over 500 pounds. What I can say is that using a thermal imaging camera, it took us less than two minutes to track down that problem. And prior to that, we had spent hours, hours using clamp meters, pulling fuses, testing voltages across various things. So if you do have a parasitic battery draw on your car or you have some dodgy wiring in the wiring loom or something like that, you might find that one of these thermal imaging cameras can find that problem in minutes as opposed to the hours it would otherwise take. Another point worth mentioning is one of our subscribers had exactly that problem on his uh, SL500 a parasitic battery drawer and I asked him how much it cost um, Mercedes when he took the car in and they couldn't find it the first few times but eventually they found it and he told me that they charged £500 in labour to actually track it down to a seat control module. Now that's about right so just bear that in mind if you do have a parasitic battery drawer it can take hours to find using that pulling fuse method and minutes using a thermal imaging camera.